What's up friends, welcome back to 3 Tales. I'm Opie and today I'm going to be showing you all how I made these maple countertops. Stick around, I hope you all enjoy. For this project, I wanted to go with maple hardwood. It's a beautiful thing, it's very versatile, and it takes stain really well. I have a local lumber supplier who has great deals on maple, so I picked it up and I made sure that the boards had some different figuring in there. There's some ambrosia, um, some bird's eye, a little bit of uh, curling in it. It just is some beautiful stock. It's three face, so I didn't have to work too much with it. I sent it through my jointer and planer just a little bit to make sure it was all square and even. And then I ripped down the boards to three inches and six inches. And these are gonna be some different varying sizes that I can play around with to get my final dimensions of 24 inches on my tabletops. Because the cabinets that these countertops are gonna be going on top of are in a different area and completely, I matched them up with some half inch plywood and I made sure to get the exact dimensions in kind of a template. Uh, once I had that done and I had all the templates out, I invited my wife into the shop uh, because she's an interior designer and she's actually better with grain structure and just making things look beautiful, uh, well, way better than I am at least. Okay, it doesn't matter, this can be the front or that can be the front, we can decide that, but... Um, you want to match up the grain pattern and coloring. Right, probably. Not probably, that's what you want to do. So it looks good, you like your grain structure? Yeah, I think this is good. This is what I want. Love you. With a newfound confidence and the go-ahead from the wife, I marked everything so I knew where it all lined up, and then I used this doweling jig. I just got it from a regular big box store, and I went ahead and started knocking in the holes that I'm going to be using for the dowels. This is going to help to keep the board aligned together, and it's going to limit the amount of movement in the future whenever seasons hit it. You can also do this with a biscuit joiner. I don't own one because this is way cheaper. Afterwards, I make sure to knock down any of the blowout bits with just some 80 grit sandpaper. I don't want any bits stuck in between when I'm trying to laminate this. For this project, I'm using Tight Bond Ultimate number no. three wood glue. Um, it's a water resistant glue. Uh, <laughs> it has a quick curing time and it holds really well. I've never had a problem with it before. And then uh, I use these 3 8 inch dowels that fit inside the holes perfectly. And I went through and hammered them all down, came back with just a little bit of glue on top of them so that it would be on both sides of the wood. And then I placed the next piece of wood on top. I made sure to stagger these dowels as well um, so that they're not sitting directly on top of each other. I made sure to tap them all in with a soft rubber mallet and uh, when they went on top of each other, honestly, you could start seeing the shape and it started looking really good. So whenever you're doing this project, clamping is the most important thing, obviously. Uh, I made sure to clamp this down to the board so that it didn't cup up in any way. Uh, sadly, my camera died while I was in the middle of clamping and I didn't realize it and I couldn't exactly go back and do it over. So. Just if you put all your clamps on there, I borrowed clamps from friends, I got more clamps, I bought clamps, so just always use clamps. Once the clamping was done and everything was nice and solid overnight, I came back through with a kind of dull chisel so that I could get all the excess uh, squeeze out from the glue. And whenever I felt like I was pretty good on that, I came through with the circular saw and I just made a rough pass. I kind of scribed a line, but I fixed the base of the tabletop to that half inch plywood that I used as the template. So I wanted to make sure that I did this cut proud. And then after I made these cuts, I was able to come back through with a trim flush bit on my, on my router and I made everything line up exactly. So it all aligned the exact same way. A uh, pretty easy job that way to make sure that everything fits perfect. Um, it's just, it's a little dirty, so make sure you're wearing all your proper protective gear. Man. 
for the apron, I'm gonna be doing pretty much the same thing. I'm doing mitered edges on the aprons to go around and wrap around all of these. But I'm gonna be doing the same thing. This is a test piece that I have for setting up all my dowels. It's very important to make sure that you get the right amount of depth. You don't wanna to go too far down and then it doesn't have enough grab on it. And you wanna make sure that obviously you don't go down far enough. Then it stands out and is proud. That's very bad. So outside of that though, it's pretty much the same process as doing the dowels for the basic tabletop lamination, except this one is gonna be going inside of the apron and the side of the main countertop itself. Now the clamp up for putting on the apron, I did make sure to record. Now this was actually a very difficult kind of clamp up. Uh, this is what I call the Superman corner. Uh, the shape is kind of like a Superman corner, but it's 70 inches all the way back. So it's a really big clamp up and I actually only had two clamps that could reach that distance. Um, so I ended up using tie downs for this. I used a soft mallet to hammer in the actual uh, apron around it and then I put on a sacrificial piece of wood to sit in between the clamps, the, the actual maple itself and you know all the tie downs and everything. I, with the kind of pressure that you need to do something like this, it's very easy to damage and imprint uh, either the clamps or the tie downs onto the maple apron. So I made sure to put something that I didn't care about, some kind of sacrifice. Should we go? I made that. I didn't make that. And then, and then it was sanding. I sanded a lot. I sanded 80 grit. I sanded the tabletop. I sanded the aprons. I sanded some wood filler. So that was done. If you'd like to know how to do wood filler, I've got it in some of my other videos. I'll link that now. But I sanded. I sanded gently. I sanded harshly. I sanded sexually. I sanded cautiously. I sanded in every way you can imagine. I sanded lackadaisically and dangerously and remotely. I sanded for a really, really, really long time. That's my elbow logo. Am I out of the shop? Yeah, you're out. I stained all these pieces using a uh, sponge and English chestnut as the actual stain. I tried to do it as evenly as I could uh, since I do let stains sit. You want to make sure that you get nice even coats, kind of like if you're applying a polyurethane coating. So just make sure that all of it's nice and even and it should be good to let it sit. Okay. Why are you all right here? What are we doing, Obi? I have let this soak in the lovely stain, the English chestnut. Can you turn on the light? I let the English chestnut soak for about 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna wipe it off, and then we're gonna see how this, this is not me, this. This is what we care about. This is what's beautiful. How's that look? It's a really pretty piece of wood, baby. Wood point. Tomorrow, Polly. Tomorrow's Polly day. I gotta first, I gotta clean the shop and get all the dust out. Yeah, because there's a lot of dust in here. Everything is dusty. Look so tonight we'll let it settle. Look at your shirt. More. There's dust all over everything. Everything. It's not dust, it's man litter. No, it's not sawdust. It's man dust. It's not sawdust, because sawdust is more chippy than that. Right, well, it's like, I'm leaving. You want me to stop Goodbye. recording you? Goodbye. You didn't tell me to stop recording. I'm recording. For the polyurethane, I'm using an oil-based uh, semi-gloss. Uh, it comes out very shiny and it adds a slight amber tint to it, which I actually 
like I did some test pieces and I thought that kind of amber hue that got added on came out really beautifully. You just want to try to make sure that you do really nice even strokes. And then I come back through with a 300 grit sanding block and some tack paper after each coat every three times and then it was ready to install after letting it dry overnight. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope that you all enjoyed and I hope you got to learn something. If you guys did enjoy that video and you want to know anything else about how I built this library, feel free to click on this video over here. It'll take you to all that other stuff. If not, you can click some of these for some of our other videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow along. I put out weekly videos on Fridays. I hope to see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much, friends.